Hi everyone and welcome to Biology Professor. Today we're going to talk about scramblases which play an important role in membrane function and then at the end of the video I'm going to talk a little bit about a special kind of protein that sometimes uh, classified as a scramblase called biogenic flippases. So be looking out for that at the end. So let's go ahead and get started. Basically, the, the point of this video and another video that I'm posting is to talk about enzymes that catalyze a special kind of diffusion of phospholipids across biological membranes. And the type of diffusion that they do is called transverse diffusion. Sometimes this is referred to as flip-flop diffusion. So right here, I've got a drawing of a, of a biological mem membrane. In this case, we're going to call it the plasma membrane. Remember that these membranes are studded with proteins, so they've got transmembrane proteins like the flipases, flopases, and scramblases that we're talking about right now. Um, and they've also got two faces or two leaflets that make up this phospholipid bilayer. Remember, bi and bilayer means two. So there is basically an exoplasmic face of lipids that's on the outside, and then a cytoplasmic face of the plasma membrane is on the inside, so like touching the cytoplasm. And so the, the phospholipids in these membranes, they can diffuse laterally very easily. That means just moving back and forth in, you know, all staying in the same face, whatever face they're in, diffusing um, around that face, whether it be the exoplasmic face or the cytoplasmic face. What these guys do, these uh, enzymes, they catalyze flip-flop or transverse diffusion. So that's moving from one face to another face. So either from the exoplasmic face to the cytoplasmic face, that's what flippases do, or from the uh, cytoplasmic face to the exoplasmic face, that's what flopases do. I have another video, you know, the star right here, that goes into flippases and flopases in a lot more detail, so be sure to check that one out. Um, but all of these enzymes, um, particularly the, the flippases and flopases, you know, they, they catalyze this diffusion really to maintain membrane asymmetry. And what that means is that with these biological membranes, you know, all of these phospholipids, they're not all the same. There's a lot of different kinds of phospholipids. Um, phosphatidylserine, phosphatidylcholine, phosphatidylethanolamine, uh, um, single myelin, uh, cholesterol, right? Well, cholesterol is a, a steroid on a phospholipid. But the point is that there's a lot of different uh, lipids in this bilayer, some of them are much more frequent in the exoplasmic phase, some are much more frequent in the cytoplasmic phase, and the, having the right frequencies, the right phospholipids on the right side of that membrane is really important for membrane function. So that's what we call membrane asymmetry, having like different phospholipids in different places, um, basically on, in, in one leaflet versus another leaflet. And so these enzymes help to maintain that. Now these enzymes are transmembrane, right? The flip bases, the flop bases, the scramble bases, they, they span the membrane, that makes them transmembrane proteins, and they're lipid transporters. So they're transporting phospholipids from one side to another. Now these may be highly specific, meaning that they may only transport like one kind of uh, one kind of phospholipid or they may transport multiple types. It just kind of depends on which protein you're talking about. But really importantly, they provide a way for hydrophilic heads to move across the hydrophobic bilayer middle. And I've kind of got that illustrated up here. So here we've got a membrane. This right here, what I've drawn, is a scramblase. Scramblases are calcium dependent, as we'll see in a minute. But in order for uh, the scramblase, in, in this instance, to move phospholipids from one side of the membrane to another side, meaning from like the exoplasmic side on the outside to the cytoplasmic side on the inside, or vice versa, they, they do so by providing a mechanism through which this you know, hydrophilic, so the, all of these head groups, you see the little green dash, that's a minus sign, a negative sign. 
And so these heads, both the ones that are down here and the ones that are up here, they are very polar, very hydrophilic. So I'm going to write that right here. These heads are hydrophilic, remember that's water loving, and very polar. So they like to um, interact with water and other polar things. On the other hand, those fatty acid tails that are in the middle of the bilayer, that are part of those phospholipids, those are very water fearing. Remember that means that they are hydrophobic and non-polar. And these things, you know, they're like water and oil, right? They don't like to mix. So thermodynamically, that is not favored. So really, you know, all of these types, but here we're talking about scramblases in, in particular, the scramblases offer a way for these negatively charged, uh, negatively charged phospholipid heads to be able to cross, to, to flip-flop, to transversely diffuse from one side to the other side um, through that very hydrophobic, nonpolar barrier. So that's kind of what the mechanism looks like. Now let's keep talking about scramblases. In humans, there are five different scramblases. We call them HPLSCR1 through, I should have had a little H right here too, through HPLSCR5. So five different ones. They have differential expression between tissues. Some of them are expressed in lots of different tissues, um, whereas, for example, HPLCR2 has only been found to be expressed in the male testis. So differential expression between tissues. And then scramblases, they're distinct from flip bases and flop bases. So again, if you're interested in flip bases and flop bases, see my other video on that. But the scramblases, they've got some different characteristics. First of all, they're energy independent. They do not require ATP. So flip bases and flop bases, they have ATP hydrolysis. That's like an energy investment from the cell to drive forward their action for them to do their job. On the other hand, scramblases, energy independent, no ATP hydrolysis required. On the other hand, scramblases are calcium dependent. So the scramblase complexes, they have a calcium ion binding domain. For those of you interested in protein domains, um, there, it's like an EF hand-like domain. But anyways, it binds calcium. Now, normally, at like a resting sort of normal state of the cell, normally there's low calcium in the cells. And this means since calcium, I'll circle that right there, since calcium binding is necessary for the scramblase to function, if there's low calcium in the cells, there tends to be low scramblase activity. Now remember that the, I, I talked earlier about this membrane asymmetry and how important it is that certain uh, phospholipids be very frequent in the exoplasmic phase and other phospholipids be very frequent in the cytoplasmic phase. Well, scramblase, I mean, the way that it works is by scrambling these phospholipids, moving them in, in either direction. So that's called bi-directional, moving from um, outside to the inside or from the inside face to the outside face. And so one of the ways this happens or is triggered is through increased cytosolic calcium. So when you get an increase, I'm going to have some up arrows right there, when you get some increase in calcium ions, in the cytosolic, the inside compartment of the cell, you also get increased scramblase activity. And so what it does is it scrambles these negatively charged phospholipids bi-directionally. Remember flip bases and flop bases? Uh, one direction only, flip bases going from exoplasmic phase to cytoplasmic phase, flop bases moving things in the opposite direction, scramblases either direction, bi-directional. So 
scramble these negatively charged phospholipids, giving them a pathway to be able to cross through that hydrophobic fatty acid tail portion of the bilayer and, and then be, be basically flipped to the other side. So this scramblase mediated transport is particularly um, important. There's a, a few different um, phenomena, I guess you could say cellular phenomena, where we, where we see this a lot. And one is with the, um, with the phospholipid phosphatidylserine. So phosphatidylserine gets transported from the inside cytosolic or cytoplasmic leaflet to the exoplasmic leaflet. Now, it's important that you realize that about 96% of phosphatidylserine is usually in the inside leaflet, okay? So like in the cytoplasmic face. Um, so usually 96% of this on the inside, but scramblase mediated transport, scramblase moving phosphatidylserine from the inner leaflet to the outer leaflet is an early step in a process known as apoptosis. And maybe you've heard of this. Apoptosis is programmed cell death. It is the regulated, organized breakdown and death of a cell. And it's a, a normal part of functioning in multicellular organisms. And so having that phosphatidylserine suddenly appearing at much higher frequencies on the outside of a cell, that actually is an early step in apoptosis and it signals to uh, basically passing immune cells called macrophages to engulf and, and kill the cell. And this is a way that um, that like old or damaged cells can be broken down and their parts recycled, basically. So that is scramblases. I now want to take a minute to talk about a, a different class of these uh, transmembrane lipid transporter proteins. And those are known as biogenic flipases. And I talk a little bit more about biogenic flipases in my video on flipases and flopases. And the reason I bring them up here is because even though they are often called flipases, they are sometimes classified as scramblases. In other words, depending on where you're reading about them, what source you're using, sometimes they'll be referred to as flipases and sometimes they'll be called scramblases. Now, why is this? Why are they sometimes called scramblases? Well, they have some things in common with scramblases. You know, they are ATP independent. Remember that flipases hydrolyze ATP. They require ATP to do their job. Whereas these uh, lipid transporter proteins are ATP independent, no ATP required, like scramblases. They're also bidirectional. Remember, uh, scramblases, I think you can see it best here, scramblases are moving phospholipids in either direction, in both directions, whereas flipase is only moving from the exoplasmic to the cytoplasmic side of the membrane. So in this way, the biogenic flipases are very similar to scramblases. But then in other ways, they're not very similar to scramblases. They are constitutively active, so they're not activated through this like calcium binding domain. They also, even though they're bidirectional, moving things in either direction across the membrane, they are really especially important for movement in a, in a particular direction. And that is because phospholipids that are made in the endoplasmic reticulum, in the lumen of the endoplasmic reticulum, um, or in the bacterial plasma membrane, they have to be moved. They have to be moved from the, basically from the ER lumen to the cytoplasmic side. Um, and that is very similar to what, you know, basically regular flipases do, moving from from, from one, from, from the original destination, from, from the original location, sorry, from the original location to the cytoplasmic side, biogenic flipases are moving from the ER lumen to the cytoplasmic side. I should probably write that right here. 
we are lumen to the cytoplasmic or cytosolic side. Okay. Um, or if they're in bacterial plasma membranes to the outer leaflet. Um, and I guess I want to say one more thing. This word right here, uh, biogenic, this is referring to membranes where, where, where membrane is being created or synthesized. So particularly in the endoplasmic reticulum, also the Golgi apparatus in eukaryotic cells, um, this is where our membranes are being made, being synthesized. So that's why it's called biogenic. So we are talking about the lipid transporters that are playing a role in those biogenic uh, membranes in the ER. So if you want to learn more, I know I've already mentioned that video on flipases and flopases. Um, I also have a video on membrane asymmetry and sightedness if you want to learn more about you know, which phospholipids are present on either side and how that happens and why it's important. And I guess otherwise that's it for today. So thank you so much for watching Biology Professor. Please, please, please make sure that you subscribe. Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell to get notifications and good luck studying. I will see you next time. Thanks guys.